Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm Magnus Modestus and I'm playing some more Euro Truck Simulator 2. So last time we came to Brest in Brittany in France and now we're going to head back to the UK to Cardiff in Wales with 21 tonnes of basil. And this may very well end up being the last job I do in this particular truck. I said all along I wasn't planning to keep using this truck for too long. I'm not sure why the handbrake just turned itself on there. Odd. Um, so yeah, I said all along I wasn't going to keep using this truck for too long. I want to get through and experience a bunch of different ones. For variety's sake, as well as for the sake of picking up a particular achievement which has somehow eluded me for years. So, yeah, this may or may not be the final job in this truck. I haven't entirely reached a conclusion on that yet, but don't be at all surprised if I'm driving something different next time. Okay, so we've picked up our basil. Now we need to make our way to the ferry port. Probably shouldn't be driving across the pavement like that. But hey, I never said I was any good at this game. Okay, so we are waiting for this light to change and then we'll be on our way. So it's obviously night time now, it's 25 past 11 by the looks of it. I think it's something like an 8 hour ferry journey. So we should have clear daylight for the UK leg of this particular trip, which will not be unwelcome. Pretty though the, the towns do look in the dark. So the, well the ferry port of course isn't actually in Brest, it's at Roscoff I think, which is, um, I have no idea if that's accurate to real life. I've been to Brittany, I live in South West England, but I've never actually been on that particular ferry route. I've been to France by ferry from Dover, and I've been to France by ferry from Portsmouth. But I've never been to France by ferry from Plymouth. So I couldn't tell you off the top of my head if it does in fact go to Roscoff, or if it instead goes to Cherbourg, or Brest, or Campere, or wherever. But they've got it as Roscoff, so I'm going to assume and, and proceed on the basis that that is correct, because the rest of their ferry routes do seem to be accurate, so no reason to suspect that this one isn't. Well, I got out of his way there, but he didn't seem to want to take the window, never mind skin off my nose so we are coming up to the airport I believe we passed that on our way in but we haven't been to it yet so that will be presumably a destination for some point in the future it's always hard to know with these sort of extremities of the map when you'll get back to them, uh, the centre of the map, uh, 
eastern France, southern Germany, all of Germany really, uh, the sort of places you pass through quite frequently in the course of this game. Brittany is uh, a little bit out of the way, but I shall certainly endeavour to have a few more trips out here. It's a part of the world in real life that I find uh, very appealing. Beautiful landscapes, beautiful. Uh, food, beautiful uh, buildings, lovely place, uh, and it's an area in the game that I find is quite easy to drive. I right, so France, on the whole, is very, very enjoyable. game before the Vive la France expansion, France was actually um, quite a frustrating area of the map to drive in. It's constant stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Every time you come to a, a toll booth, and the toll booths are fairly frequent in France. They're not as frequent in France as because they are in Italy, but they are fairly frequent. Uh, at some point, I'm not sure which expansion introduced it, but at some point they brought in the the toll booth that you don't even have to stop for. There we go. Everyone seems to be turning anyway, so there we go. Um, so not having to stop to pay a toll has really changed the experience, much for the better. You still have to slow down to something like 30 kilometers per hour, but it's a lot less frustrating and a lot less restrictive than having to come to a full stop every time. There are still some toll booths in the game, I believe, where that's not an option. The telepass or via pass or something they call it. Uh, it's not available at all toll booths, but it is with the vast majority of them. And it's made driving in countries like France, like Italy, like Poland, where toll booths are quite frequent, uh, a lot more bearable. Uh, apparently I'm speeding, I didn't even realise. Naughty me. Should almost be at the ferry port now. take a right turn here I think. It can be a little bit hard to read the sat nav map sometimes in urban areas where roads are quite close together. But I generally get away with it. I generally manage just about okay. I have tried using the uh, voice assisted navigation and in ATS I found it's absolutely fine but I have had some issues with it in ETS 2 where the the voice what the voice tells you to do and what's actually happening on the road don't necessarily correspond to one another 
think I've only really had those issues in the UK, so maybe uh, an issue with left-hand drive. Um, you know, with, with driving on the left, and where where you're driving on the right, maybe okay. Uh, but because of those issues, I have turned voice-assisted navigation off for now. I may re-enable it at a future time and give it a, give it another chance. We shall see. So this is a seven-hour ferry trip. So there we go. We have lovely daylight. It's early in the morning, 8 a.m. here in Plymouth. Now I've just got to remember to drive on the left again. Because as somebody who has spent most of my time over the years in this game driving in continental Europe, I often find when I get back to the UK, <laughs> I end up putting my truck on the wrong side of the road. So I'll try not to do that. So we're in um, in Plymouth, which is all the way down in Devon, very edge of Devon. Literally cross the river and you're in Cornwall. And we are headed up to Cardiff in South Wales, which presumably will take us across one of the seven toll bridges. I say one of them, I doubt they're both in the game. I'm not sure. I've ever actually been across them in the game. I guess I must have been at some point, but I don't have any recollection of doing so. So I can't actually remember off the top of my head whether they have toll booths on them. I assume they do. Then again, I think they're now toll free in real life or if they're not already they will be soon so there's potentially another change for SCS to update their game with at some point if they haven't already I'll be interested to see what happens within the game if and when Brexit occurs. I mean, it's looking very likely now that Brexit will happen, but it's not quite a guaranteed done deal yet, I don't think. Let's not get into uh, any political discussion on that matter. Quite a divisive issue, that's for certain. Not only the matter of Brexit itself, but the handling of it. Well, I'll certainly be interested to see what happens within this game to reflect it. I suspect. A lot, actually, given that the UK is separated from the rest of the map by ferries, and in one case a train. Because, of course, where the map goes into Russia, you hit the Russian border within the game, it's, it's quite simplified. I mean, you, just, you basically go up to a toll booth, but it's one that doesn't open immediately. It just makes you wait a minute or two to simulate you know, having your passport checked and so on. But of course, that's a land border. So they may not feel the need to put anything like that you know, 
on top of the ferries and the channel tunnel and I consider those to be sufficient delay already and then of course another unknown there is when they eventually get around to rebuilding the UK whether they'll also at that point deign to include Ireland and then if there's a land border between Northern Ireland and the Republic then that may end up getting a similar treatment to the Russian border but it's a long way off yet I should think any of that apparently they're being very naughty today two speeding fines in one trip it's not uh, not ideal don't drive like me kids three sort of towers sort of piled on things there are off to the right it's an interesting feature it probably is something of some significance I just don't know what to um, try and find out what that is and if I do find out and we ever pass it again I'll try and remember to tell you there's also a strange big tower there I'm not sure if that's supposed to represent something in the real world or if it's just a generic bit of scenery entirely sure as I keep saying where we are just yet because it's um, can be difficult to tell where you are but we appear to be on the coming onto the M5 now okay so we're somewhere around Exeter at this point I guess I think that's where the M5 begins in this direction and then it proceeds up past Bristol and on to Birmingham, but we won't be going that far. We'll be switching on to the M4, which then heads out into South Wales. And Bristol's, of course, one of those places as I mentioned before that I'm surprised is not in the game for a number of reasons one being that it's huge and very significant um, another being that it's at the junction of uh, two of the major motorways namely the M4 and the M5 and the transition from one to the other within the game does feel somewhat 
diminished without having Bristol in place. So hopefully that will be added at some point, but um, for now it's not there. We'll just have to make the best of that. But that's fine. Now we do have Cardiff and Swansea. Um, both representing South Wales. We've got Plymouth for South West England. It's you know, it's not like the map is empty. Far from it. I think you have to sort of draw the line somewhere because the UK is or England at least is quite dense in its population and its population centres compared to well most of the rest of the world really so obviously if we were to, try to, if we were to uh, expect them to try to include everywhere well there simply wouldn't be room on the map yeah, they've already made the UK at a larger scale than the rest of the map. It's, uh, I forget if it's 1 to 12 or 1 to 15. It's one of those. And then the continental part of the map is something like 1 to 20. So it's already um, what they've done with the UK certainly for at the time they made it and for the scope of the game at the time they made it they've been generous but I, I certainly think if they were making the UK now as you know if the UK wasn't in the base game they were making it now as a DLC to the game I think they would make it very differently than they have. There's some big places in England missing. Most of Wales is missing. Most of, or a good chunk at least, of Scotland is missing. Uh, Ireland, both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland are completely missing. Um, none of the islands around uh, Britain are in it. There's no Isle of Wight, there's no uh, Isle of Man, no Hebrides. Which again, you know, is fine. These aren't major, you know, economically important major urban centres or anything. But when you look at, at ProMods, what ProMods has done, this inclusion of various Hebridean Isles with the Isle of Man. Um, did it have the Channel Islands as well? I honestly can't remember. Um, but yeah, the, the comparison is, it is night and day. Although I don't have uh, ProMods activated on this profile at the moment, that's not to say that I don't highly recommend it. If you haven't already given ProMods a go, I would say it's well worth trying out. It's quite big. Unless you pay, it's not, you have to pay a lot of things, like one euro. Um, but unless you pay that, you have to download it in like seven or eight parts. But it is worth the effort of finding that and um, going through that process and installing it, particularly if you want to spend a lot of time driving in the British Isles or in Scandinavia. Uh, they for me 
are the best parts of pro mods. The most well done parts. Uh, but maybe not right now because I don't believe it's currently I'm not sure how they've done it. I know there's a compatibility patch out for the Black Sea DLC, but I'm not sure if that means that you get FCS's Black Sea region, or if Promod's Black Sea region replaces it. Because I haven't tried it out since the Black Sea DLC came out. Uh, but it, certainly, like I said, the compatibility patch is there, so you can run it. Um, just not sure if it's optimal at the moment. Um, so we've come across the uh, one of the seven bridges there. Um, there did not appear to be a toll booth. Well, there wasn't a toll booth, so that answers that question at least. Because I I was curious. As I said, it's been a long time, if ever since I've been over that bridge. I think I must have been over it. I must have been. But not for a long time. So now we know there is no toll booth there. So I haven't been over the seven bridges in real life for quite a long time either. It's been... Uh, couple of years I think. So we're not far off Cardiff now. I think we already passed one junction that goes into the east of Cardiff so presumably we'll be coming off here presumably going into the north of Cardiff. I used to live in Cardiff for a number of years. So it's uh, it's an area, a city, a road network, in real life at least, that I know very well. Of course the road network within the game is not particularly accurate to real life. For instance, This area here isn't fields in real life. This is built up. Unless I'm not where I think I am. Well, I think I am where I think I am. I don't think that I'm not where I think I am. And if I think I am, if I am where I think I am, and I think I am, then I no, I've I've lost track. I've, I've lost track of all my things. Um, that was quite confusing, wasn't it? No matter. The point is this: we're almost there. We're almost done with this job. I need to slow down a bit now. Um, I, I can honestly say that this doesn't look a lot like Cardiff. As somebody who spent um, four or five years living in Cardiff, this does not look lo very much at all like Cardiff. They do have the stadium off in the distance there somewhere. And it's, it's not a terrible rendition of the stadium. That they've done reasonably well. But it's one of those things like with any city in this game, or really, like with cities in games generally. This is something that's been bugging me about cities in games for a very long time. And it's the same no matter what sort of setting 
the game has, what sort of era it's set in. Um, very few, if any, cities in games have adequate sort of urban sprawl. And I don't know why that is. Perfectly honest. Um, you know, I mean, you, you think games developers live in cities for the most part, I should think. They should know what a city is like. And yeah, I mean, I think it first hit me with Oblivion, really, and the Imperial City in Oblivion, where it's, it's divided into its you know, six or eight segments, whatever it is, and there's there's no sprawl around it, and you're looking at it and you're thinking, well, as I was thinking, you know, this is the capital city of a major continental empire, and there's enough housing here for maybe a couple of hundred people. But it doesn't seem to bug everyone else as much as it bugs me. And I guess there's, well, obviously there's technical reasons for the limitations, but... Um, I've seen other games where they find clever ways around that. Such as in Scarface, The World Is Yours. Which is a surprisingly much better game than I expected it to be. Then you could sort of see the rest of the city, but you couldn't ever visit it. So that was that, that was the way they got around that with that game was you know essentially just have background scenery that gave the illusion of the city being larger than it was. I don't know why more games can't do that. Something else. I'll be interested to see uh, when Cyberpunk comes out. What they've managed to do in that. If anyone can do it right, I think CD Projekt can. If Witcher 3 is anything to go by. Uh, I mean, again, their cities, they, they didn't have the level of sprawl that was necessarily realistic in a lot of cases, but I, I found Novigrad, at the very least, to be quite believable. size, plenty of housing. See that's gone green but it's not good enough for me. I'm a bit of a perfectionist here. Let's get this properly lined up. sure after playing the game for as long as I have I should be nailing these first time. But it is what it is. There we go. That's another job done. So we'll see where the next one takes us. I've been Magnus Modestus. Thank you for joining me.